Hey there YouTube, is it Balda Parachu with another reaction video today. We got the Space Shuttle's luckiest escape, Primal Space. Let's get into it, shall we? Hit it. This is the Space Shuttle, lifting off on what was about to become one of its most dangerous journeys into space. Space 93. Almost immediately, Ooh. fuel started leaking <clears throat> out of its right engine. Wait, what is this, Challenger? Just five seconds later, an electrical supply oh, failed, no, no. knocking its engine control computers offline. I have never heard of this. Wow. This, so I'm guessing this wasn't an accident. So uh, there's the Challenger and Columbia accidents that I know of, but this doesn't seem like either of them. So okay. All right. Unaware of what was really going on beneath them, the space shuttle crew spent the next eight minutes just moments away from a catastrophic failure, when suddenly they ran out of liquid oxygen. Okay. The shuttle had experienced two major problems that should have ended the mission. Huh. But miraculously, they happened in such a way that actually ended up saving the crew from complete disaster. Mm. We modeled the entire thing to show you the tiny objects that led to these huge Jeez. problems and how sheer luck and miraculous circumstances ended up saving the space wow. shuttle. Wow, okay. In order to understand why this flight was so dangerous in the first place, we need to look inside the shuttle's payload bay. It was carrying the Chandra Observatory Telescope, which was the largest and heaviest thing shuttle ever launched. Chandra was deployed this in 1999? Could have sworn it was older than that, okay. Combination well. put the mission over the shuttle's weight limit. It had oh. to shave off several tons before the flight, <clears throat> and so the crew was limited to five people. A lighter external tank oh. was used, and all three main engines were swapped out for lighter ones. One of these was Engine 2019, which had already flown on 18 missions. Well, it definitely has a proven track record. But before we even continue, I do want to give a shout to the Space Shuttle because... Shout out, Mr. Space Shuttle, because for, I think for most of my life, whenever I've seen a Space Shuttle, it's always been like, well, first of all, how and why is was always the question I asked. And I think, you know, as, as a kid, it was just like, the the sheer idea you could have an item like so like even a vehicle that you put from the ground put it into space and then watch it re-enter the earth with temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun and it'd still be fine and then still touches down perfectly on the ground was mind-blowing to me and you know years later after you after you kind of study a bit more you learn a bit more about the space shuttle it doesn't lose any of its charm it's still like you know uh, considering I think NASA stopped this, you know, the shuttle program, I think in what, 2012, 2013? Uh, was it was it older than that? Pretty sure. But since NASA did stop the space shuttle program, it was always like, you know, yeah, it's, it's not as nearly as interesting in, you know, space exploration as much because when you had the space shuttle, it was almost like, oh, you had missions to space, it comes back, and it was always something you could look forward to. So, I mean, shout out to SpaceX for, you know, sending rockets into space and bringing them back. And their whole manned mission things, they, all got, they got planned out. So, uh, yeah. I think space is getting interesting again. So I think that's one good thing I'm looking forward to in the coming years. So uh, let's get into it. Making it one of the most used space shuttle engines. Mm. Over time, cracks had started to show in a couple of its liquid oxygen posts. These are the thin pipes that carry liquid oxygen into the combustion chamber. If one of these failed mid-flight, it would rip the engine apart yeah. and destroy the entire vehicle. Mm. Instead of replacing these, NASA simply deactivated them by placing a small metal pin at the top, which stopped the liquid oxygen from flowing through. This was common practice for NASA, and it saved the engine from going through a lengthy refurbishment. I, I, I as, presume, like, okay, I mean, this is just the engineering mind in me coming out. I presume there's enough engineering data or analyses, you know, conducted just to have the idea that that pin shouldn't dislodge from its position of the engine, especially at these high pressures of liquid oxygen next to it. Uh, is this, does this mean? Space Shuttle Columbia ignited its engine. Oh, this is Columbia, wow. Going through a lengthy refurbishment. But as Space Shuttle Columbia ignited its engines, one of these metal pins worked its way loose and shot itself into the combustion. NASA, you had one job. <laughs> you had one job to ensure that pin stayed in place if we use again. All right, okay. Its engines, one of these metal pins... I, I think, you know, you kind of keep forgetting... I'm sorry for pausing, but it's like... Those are like small bullets that just travel through the system. And at those high speeds, whatever it strikes, it's cutting through it. ...worked its way loose and Yikes. shot itself into the combustion chamber at over 30 meters per Ooh. second. In the blink of an eye, it bounced off the chamber walls and punctured a hole in the delicate engine nozzle. Ooh. This part of the engine is made up of over 1,000 thin tubes, mm -hmm. which circulate the ultra-cold liquid hydrogen to stop the nozzle from melting. From here, the hydrogen makes its way into the combustion chamber, 
where it ignites and produces thrust. Which I, uh, which I still think is ingenious design, because it's like, you know, you get to use the thermodynamic properties that it's so cold for the hydrogen that you can still circulate it around uh, using those, you know, very long fin pipes, which is which has always been fascinating to me because it's like outside of that pipe is just normal te air temp. It's perfect. Inside is like thousands of degrees. So it's it's always that, you know, that small thin layer of very cooling hydrogen flow that's keeping this thing in check and it's flowing around going to combustion chamber and then it combusts so now you have a hole in a couple of them so okay i can see where this is going and i presume this would have led to some more problems like higher burn rate or something that combustion yeah. chamber where it ignites and produces thrust okay. when the pin collided with the nozzle it ripped a hole in three of the pipes and liquid hydrogen began pouring out of the engine if just two more of these pipes had been damaged, the nozzle would have melted, Ooh. causing a chain reaction that would have completely okay, so they, they destroyed the vehicle. They got lucky, the but vehicle. there's a problem then, right? The space shuttle was just barely hanging on, but all of this went completely unnoticed since none of the sensors could detect the mm. leak. What the sensors did detect was a lower chamber pressure since less uh, hydrogen was making its so way So it compensates by increasing chamber. pressure, right? In order to fix yeah. this, the onboard computers automatically started pumping more liquid oxygen it should. into the engine, which brought the pressure back up to the correct Good. amount. This meant that the shuttle was now burning through oh. its liquid oxygen too quickly. And if it continued like this, it would run out way before reaching orbit. I mean... Correct me if I'm wrong, like, I, I get it, the mission success needs them to be on a certain orbit, so they need, you know, to be at the exact place at the exact time and the ex exact trajectory in space to, you know, well, not necessarily fall back to Earth, but have enough momentum to keep falling, you know, straight, so you keep having a stable orbit around the Earth. But, you know, I mean... I'm just playing the devil's advocate. If you are in space, you would have much less problems, you know, trying to get to that orbit. Either I'm wrong. Couldn't you use like some of those air thrusters to kind of get yourself into the right orbit? Is that's, that's what I assume is being done with satellites, I guess. But while all this was going on, a completely unrelated electrical problem had occurred in the vehicle. Okay. Space Shuttle Columbia had just left the launch pad and was already on the verge of a complete disaster. Well, I mean, well, not really. I mean, yes, three of them did break, but you need five to actually blow up, you know, at least melt through uh, whatever critical section of the nozzle that is. So, yeah, you'd still be fine. You'll still make it to space, probably, uh, with less oxygen. Isn't... Its right engine was burning through too much liquid oxygen. Okay. And if it ran out the shuttle might not have made it into orbit. Mm. Or, even worse, the engines could have ripped themselves apart. Amazingly, a completely separate... Wait, what? Why? Worse, the engines could have ripped themselves apart. Amazingly, a completely separate problem was about to save the day. Inside the payload bay were a series of electrical wires that carried power to instruments all over the vehicle. One of these wires ran alongside a small screw that had been over-tightened and had a very sharp edge. No. Over the course of many flights, this wire had rubbed against the screw, and its insulation had been slowly worn and away. Then it Five seconds into the flight, the exposed wire arced onto sure. the screw, causing a short circuit and setting a number of instruments off. Where are we going with this? This immediately set off all kinds of warnings inside the Which you don't want to see. You'd have a heart attack seeing that. Warning. <laughs> the fuel cells aboard shuttle used hydrogen and oxygen to produce all of the electricity for the vehicle. Okay. If one of these went wrong, the results would be catastrophic. Mm. Luckily, this was just a faulty reading mm. and there was nothing wrong with the fuel cells. The real problem was lurking down below. Two computers in charge of controlling the shuttle's engines had been knocked offline thanks to the electricity shortage. Huh. Each engine had a main computer and a backup computer, right. which would take over if something went wrong. The right engine, which was leaking fuel, had just lost its backup computer, and the center engine lost its main computer. Hmm. This caused a unique problem that actually turned into a solution. You see, under normal circumstances, both computers run simultaneously. The data from both computers is compared and averaged out, mm. and this is what is used to control the engines. This means that if a sensor on one of the computers is reading abnormally high or low, it won't have such a big effect on the engine. Oh. As it turned out, the pressure sensor on the backup computer was reading incorrectly, and it was sending back an abnormally high pressure reading. 
Since the main computer wasn't there to cancel this out, it tricked the engine into thinking the pressure was too high. Because of this, the engine started pumping less liquid it's oxygen into the down. engine to reduce the pressure. This now meant but that it, although the right it engine was guzzling the wow. too much oxygen, the center engine was using less than normal, and so the problems cancelled each other out. If the center engine didn't have a faulty sensor, or if the electrical supply hadn't failed, the whole shuttle would have run out of liquid oxygen much sooner, and it wouldn't have reached orbit. Had this actually happened, the crew would have had to make an aborted landing back on yeah. Earth, still carrying the enormous telescope on their backs. By sheer coincidence, two completely separate problems occurred that perfectly cancelled each other yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I do have to mention it, but in ter terms of like actual, like, you know, you, know, you see engineering problems in real life. The sheer odds of this happening is, first of all, minuscule. The fact that it actually happened is mind-boggling. So while you had a problem where you had some fuel leaking from one of your engine nozzles and a completely separate, unrelated problem perfectly cancelled out your existing problem. That is unheard of. I think in my experience, 100%, I've, I've never heard of it. And that is wow. That is wild. But I'm more impressed by the fact that, you know, the space shuttle, yeah, what's more concerning for me is the fact you told me there's only two flight computers, like, for each engine nozzle, which is, I mean, I guess back in back in those days, I suppose, I do, you know, you, you do have to kind of recall that the space shuttle is, what, 1970s, 90s, 80s tech, which I'm not sure if they retrofitted it any differently since then till the early 2000s, but as I understand on planes, for example, or at least on most, uh, you know, birds that fly in the sky, you know, uh, airplanes, you have three flight computers. And the whole concept being like, you know, if one of those flight computers fail, two of them are there to overrule the failing system. So it just overrules a command. But in this case, you have only two computers. It's kind of like, well, so, huh? It's, it's, it's kind of weird for me because it's like, well, it's not really that difficult in space to have, you know, oddities in like, you know, electronics. Where especially when you expose electronic items to, you know, space radiation, you're going to have weird bit flips and weird problems with most computers. So you would, I, I would have thought at least there'd be three, you know, computerized systems taking care of like the engine nozzle uh, to handle thrust, you know, which is, you know, a very critical, you know, system on the space shuttle. But I, it's, mm, you know what? I can't really complain, considering for for what it's worth. For more, yeah, more often than not, I don't think there's ever been a space shuttle accident caused by a computer failure. So I think NASA knew what they were doing more than I do. Fair enough. But I, I would still think three is best for redundancy. I, that's just my opinion, I guess. But maybe it might be a cost-related thing, just how expensive these computers are back then. So hey, it is what it is, and I presume I think they made it to space allowing shuttle to reach yeah. orbit just five meters per second off its desired speed. Okay. In the end, the shuttle was able to make up for this by using its OMS anyway. engines, and the Chandra telescope was successfully deployed. Right. Since its main engines weren't yeah. needed for the rest of the mission, the Safe. shuttle and its crew safely made it back to Earth without any issues. Now, time for the Primal Space giveaway. I've, I'm actually more surprised by the fact that, you know, I don't think I've ever heard of this. I don't think, I think it may have been like, you know, classified as not as an accident, but more of as like a critical like topic of study. Like, you, like it's like a critical incident. Like this was so close to catastrophe and it didn't happen. It was like, I but it is, that, that is good. That is solid. I've never heard of this incident. I've never seen it, you know, read it in newspapers, never seen it in books. I guess it's not well known. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. This is the space shuttle's luckiest escape, and after watching the video, I tend to agree. This is indeed his luckiest escape. Catch you, beautiful bastards, in the next one. Peace. Take care. Noise.